Hello and welcome to another edition of The Big Picture, the show where we take you behind the news, beyond the news, to, and try to understand in depth the processes that are driving the big news developments and events of the week. On Friday, the GDP figures for the first quarter of this fiscal year came out. It is 5%, the biggest drop for a long time. This comes amid reports that there is a general slowdown in the economy across sectors. To understand what is really happening in the economy, why has it slowed down, and what could be the possible way out, I'm joined by Roshan Kishore, the political economy editor of the Hindustan Times and one of the finest analysts of the Indian economic landscape in today's times. Thank you, Roshan, for joining us. Hi, Roshan. So what do these GDP figures mean? And what does it tell us about the Indian economy today? So, like you said, the June quarter GDP figures, first quarter of this fiscal year, are 5%, which is the lowest in 25 quarters. The last time we had it was in March 13, when it was 4.4%. Now, it would be one thing if this one-off phenomenon, that in one quarter the GDP sort of abruptly fell. That, unfortunately, is not the case. June 19 makes the fifth consecutive quarter that GDP growth rate has been falling in our country. So it started from June 18, it has, it has been falling for five consecutive quarters now. Since 1997, the earliest period for which we have quarterly growth data in our country, it is only the second instance that we have had a five quarter consecutive fall in GDP growth rate. So that suggests that not only is the slowdown, you know, extremely big and worrying, it has been happening for a long time now. So the Indian economy has been in grip of a slowdown for five consecutive quarter now. This, I think, is the most worrying trend. A lot of, you know, economists, commentators, I have also been arguing in my writing that this has been coming. Unfortunately, I mean, the policy making establishment, it seems it is only now that it is realizing the potential of the crisis we have at our hands. So there seems to be a debate among economists on whether this slowdown is cyclical or structural. Could you tell us what a cyclical slowdown means, what a structural slowdown means, and in your assessment, what is this? Uh, so, for the benefit of our viewers, now what we mean by a cyclical slowdown is, for example, say agricultural growth rate. So, if one year monsoon is not enough, monsoon is not sufficient, agricultural growth rate would fall down. Sometimes it, go, it even goes into negative territory. Now, that is something we would call a cyclical slowdown because we know that next year when the rains are good, the growth rate will revive. Now, a structural slowdown would be, let us say, uh, India was exporting to the rest of the world in a very big way before the 2008 financial crisis happened. So the export markets were really big, we were really growing. After the 2008 crisis, purchasing powers in the West, the most advanced countries, which were sort of very big export consumers for us, their purchasing power dipped significantly. Their incomes have been growing at a slower pace. So the dent to our export demand and hence to our GDP growth from such a phenomenon would be what is called structural. So when we say structural, we know that this is basically not a one-off thing, but a thing which unless arrested aggressively by a policy push is likely to continue. So when you know, a lot of people, the finance minister said it, the prime minister when he gave his interview to the Economic Times, they have been argued, the RBI in its annual report yesterday said that this slowdown is actually cyclical. The biggest takeaway of such an assertion is that nothing serious needs to be done at a policy level. That is the, now... Uh, now, if that is the approach of the policy-making establishment, this explains why this slowdown has continued for so long. Because they never realized the crisis we had at our hands. So, the fact that this has been happening for a sustained period of time, you seem to be suggesting, indicates that there is actually a structural slowdown. Yes. Uh, there are two, three elements to that structural slowdown. First, I said, and to be fair to this government, part of that slowdown is not something which this government has created. Like I said, you know, the... The export setback we have had in the post-crisis world and now trade bars, trade wars have only made it worse. That is one element of the structural shock the Indian economy received. The second element is, and this is something for which this government actually you know, gets to take some blame. This government takes a lot of credit for keeping inflation under check in our country. Now inflation, the measure which the RBI and everybody else targets is consumer price index. Almost half of it is food items. So in order to keep inflation under control, what you have to do is keep food prices under control. Now we all know that if food prices are low, it means farm incomes take a hit. So half of our economy is actually dependent on agriculture. 
Now, they don't do only agriculture, but a significant part of their income comes through agriculture. Now, if food prices have not been growing under this government as fast as they were earlier, it means that farm incomes have also stopped growing at the pace they were growing earlier. So, their purchasing power, you know, things such as two-wheelers, even biscuits, etc. That has an impact yeah. on rural demand across. That is one. Exports, rural incomes. The third is, and you know, I wrote a piece a couple of weeks ago on this. Policies such as demonetization, uh, GST, they are essentially meant to formalize the Indian economy because we know that a lot of economic activity in the Indian economy was outside the tax net and it has been said that the Indian economy has a very narrow tax base, etc. But in its zeal to sort of you know, push this formalization onwards and onwards and onwards, the government went, I would say, in a very hasty manner. Demonetization did not, you know, cannot have an economic defense because the primary objectives were not met. But something like a GST also, which otherwise is a good tax reform, has actually hurt incomes in the informal sector. And other policies, you know, such as ban, which, you know, ethically speaking, are good policies. You know, they, for example, you cannot do cash transactions beyond a certain amount, etc. But they have given a dent to what can be called informal economy, what can be called, you know, economy which was not paying its due taxes. But that also has had an adverse effect of demand. I'll give you a very crude example, you know, might not be politically correct. Now, we know that car sales have been declining for 12 consecutive months now. They, they have, so, uh, GDP growth has come down from, say, 7% to 5%. Car sales have actually been negative. So, we are selling lesser cars than we were a year ago. Now, think of a big SUV, you know, something like a Toyota Fortuner. Is it possible to imagine that all of those cars were being sold in white money? No. So, morally, the government is right that we have limited the use of uh, black but money. But it has had adverse but consequences. But it has had an adverse consequence on the economy. So, I see at least three structural elements to the current uh, setback. So one of the other things that you've been arguing in your recent writings is that this is actually a crisis in demand. Yeah. It is not just an issue of supply, which is what the RBI was trying to ease with uh, its, right. uh, uh, its policies. Can you explain that a bit? What so, does a demand side crisis mean? So there are two ways to look at GDP. One is a sectoral breakup, what comes from agriculture, what comes from industry, services, etc, etc. Then we go into subsectors, etc. The other way is to look at the expenditure side of it. So there's something called private final consumption expenditure, there's something called government final consumption expenditure, there's something called capital formation and net exports. So as the name suggests, private final consumption expenditure is what would broadly, what we mean when we say demand. Growth rate of private final consumption expenditure has crashed to 3% in this quarter. Now, since 2012, the period since for, from which we have data for the new GDP series, it has only gone below 4% twice before this. So, it's as simple as people do not have money to buy things in the market, which is what explains why everything from biscuits to cars are not selling today. One other takeaway from Friday's figures was that the nominal growth rate this quarter has dipped to 8%. That's right. What does nominal growth rate mean and what will this have implications on? So, when we normally talk about GDP growth rates, we actually adjust for inflation, which makes sense because you have to make, say, intertemporal comparisons. If you want to compare today's growth with, say, a period X in time, uh, then you have to adjust for inflation because inflation would otherwise inflate those figures. Where nominal GDP growth rate comes into play is, so the government, when it presents its budget, it basically says that we hope to get this much into taxes, income tax, corporate tax, GST, etc., so how does it calculate those tax numbers? Taxes as we know, so you and I pay income tax. So if you have income X, you pay 10%, 20%, 30%, depending on whatever income bracket you come into. That income is nominal income. So in order to calculate taxes, what the government does it, it assumes a nominal GDP growth rate in every budget. So the budget at a glance document, every budget has a nominal GDP growth rate. In this year's budget, the expected nominal GDP growth rate was 12%. First quarter of this year, the growth rate is 8%. If the growth rate were to be 8% for the entire year, and I really hope that it is not the case, that we are wrong, it basically means that one third of your you know, projected GDP growth is just, it's just not so This off. will have implications on the so, taxes? So this Therefore, also fiscal means deficit? that at least one third of your tax growth can also be wished away. The other point which you were saying, you know, that you know, institutions such as the RBI, etc. have been saying that you know, there is a supply side to the current slowdown. So let us look at what the RBI has been doing. It has been cutting policy rates, which is the you know, uh, driving force behind interest rates in the market, for I think five consecutive policy rates now. So the, the, the logic is, if you cut interest rates, then basically businessmen can borrow cheap and 
it is assumed that because you know earlier it was the cost of investment which was holding them back now that the cost of investment has come down they'll borrow and hence the economy will start growing but look at the other side of it i mean economic theory tells us that you cut interest rates and growth will grow every interest rate reduction has been accompanied by a reduction in the projected gdp growth rate that is very difficult to explain and that shows that the supply side is yes, not yes. the solution does not lie there yes so the government over the past week and a half or so has uh, sought to intervene we saw a press conference by nirmala sitaraman where she revised and rolled back certain budget proposals yes. which had antagonized the corporate sector yes. uh, we saw them tweak fdi rules yes uh, we also saw them take a decision on bank mergers do you think these are reformist measures which can address this slowdown or do you think this is minor tinkering which doesn't really go to the heart of the problem so uh, two press conferences has happened has been have been done by the finance minister one was i think on uh, august 23rd other was on 30th august major announced 30th august was primarily about merger of public sector banks uh, major announcements came in the press conference before that now i've written uh, about it in detail as to why i think you know welcome as though these measures are they will not go very far in sort of addressing the economic slowdown because they are into three categories first like you said is to boost economic confidence business sentiment the biggest thing was the rollback of the capital gains tax on you know fpis etc market reacted it went up 800 points etc but stock market growth has got absolutely nothing to do with gdp growth in this country we have data which shows that now other things such as you know for example the government said that you know your gst refunds will be processed very quickly you can now get a loan very quickly so these are measures primarily meant to either give your working capital back to you because the government thinks it was stuck with it in taxes or reduce the you know cost of capital increase the cost of you know liquidity etc i don't think that is the case because that once again unfortunately is in the same reasoning which the rbi has been saying that we have a supply problem now look at the gst thing now if the government thinks that a significant uh, amount of you know the, the gst collections are actually tax refunds in the last budget the government said it's expected gst collections were 1 lakh crore more than what it actually realized now if the government is telling us today that out of you know that's this massive shortfall we actually have an even bigger amount which was actually to be given back to the businessman what was not given we'll have an even bigger fiscal mess on our hands similarly you know this entire argument that you know because businessmen are not being able to get back their working capital or they are not being able to get credit etc and therefore they are not being able to produce and therefore we do not have growth rate in the economy if that were the case so hypothetically what does it mean let us say i am a biscuit maker you want to come and buy biscuits with me i can't give you biscuits because either my working capital is with the government or i want to set up say a new factory but i am not getting a loan to do that we should have seen a rise in biscuit prices so that's not happening generalizing it we should have seen a high inflation in our economy we know that inflation is actually very low so there is absolutely no demand pressure even if what the government says is true that people are not being able to produce let me throw a difficult question if you were the chief economic advisor in the ministry of finance today what are the three things that you would suggest that this government does to address the slowdown the first thing i think which has to be done is to admit that this is a demand problem this is not a supply problem because unless you know this is like a line of diagnosis if you go to a doctor and you tell him you know i have jaundice and he is treating you for typhoid it won't help so first the ca or the entire economic policy establishment i think it's unfair to single out individuals have to realize what the problem is second and i i argued about it in say a, a couple of weeks ago in a piece that you have to basically boost spending so the government has done its bit in trying to sort of assuage business sentiment etc although with the kind of you know nominal growth rates and tax shortfalls i'm talking about i'm afraid that tax terrorism might actually go up in the days to come then you have to boost spending there is fortunately one segment in our economy which is immune by all this recession etc which is government employees so in our country there is a very large cadre of government employees both at the central level and the state level i think the best thing which can be done is to give some sort of an incentive to these people to go and make big ticket spending in the economy for example if you tell government employees that if you buy a car this year you that money will be deducted off out of your income tax calculations government will lose some income tax here but at least gst etc the industry will get some boost job losses will stop that is one then i think long term measures need to be taken for the structural factors which i noted earlier if we know that the economy global economy is in a slow down trade wars are sort of worsening to you know only get worse and worse and worse we have to what is the other way to sort of compensate for a low export growth 
you basically have to look at import substitution. You know, measures such as allowing FDI, etc. can go so far. But we should have a long-term industrial policy, trade policy, etc. that we aggressively promote import substitution. Similarly, in agriculture, we celebrate that there are low food prices. All right, at least the poor benefit by that, even if the farmers are hurt. But then we should go beyond and you know, sort of encourage you know, better consumption. You know, today in PDS, we only give rice and wheat and maybe the BJP has promised that it will also give sugar. Let's hope that it happens. You have to go to the developed country model. You have to say, you know, buy vegetables from farmers directly, you know, buy eggs, buy milk, everything. Let some money go to the rural economy. That was very insightful, Roshan. Thank you so much for joining Thank you, us. Prashant. The Indian economy is in slowdown. The GDP figures are a shocking testament to the dip in the economy. This is a structural slowdown and not just a cyclical one. It requires the government to recognize what the problem is, that the problem lies in the demand side and devise policy solutions. That's what we've gleaned from our conversation with Roshan Kishore, the political economy editor of Hindustan Times. Thank you for joining us and join us for the next edition of The Big Picture next week.